Chaz Marler of Pair of Dice Paradise here, and I've been considering becoming a board game paleontologist. Why? Because I wonder if physical board games are about to become obsolete fossils, giving way to their evolving web and app-based versions. Oh, there's a growing number of board games with a digital version that, some would argue, can do the same thing as their physical counterparts, but quicker, cheaper, and with greater portability. Well, today, I'll be discussing the place of digital board games with Suzanne Sheldon, whose regular series about board game apps appears on the Dice Tower's weekly Board Game Breakfast program. We'll discuss what digital versions of board games are becoming available, and whether this trend will cannibalize the market for traditional tactile board games. So, thank you for taking the time away from your prolific Twitter feed to join me today, Suzanne. Thanks for having me, Chaz. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes, well, we'll see about that, uh, because I have questions for you. <clears throat> I oh. have answers. <laughs> Perfect. That's, try. That's going to make this work so much better that way. Okay, so uh, what I've been talking about in this segment, I've been speaking about board game apps and the potential for them to uh, encroach on or cannibalize the physical board game market. So since you do those segments, I thought that you'd be a good person to ask some questions to about this. Uh, for example, um, well, let, let's start off first with, since this is your area of expertise, uh, do you have an idea of some board game apps on either Android or iOS that you think do a really good job of emulating the board game, physical board game that they are reproducing? Well, let's get all philosophical right off the bat. Um, you know, I think it depends on what you're trying to emulate in board games. We, you know, a lot of us play board games for a variety of reasons. And if you're talking about, you know, a pure reproduction of a board game, I think a good example is probably Lords of Waterdeep, where the board is beautiful, the layer is beautiful, it looks and feels very familiar to anybody who's played Lords of Waterdeep in, you know, the physical form. And so, you know, they can just pretty much snap into the game and the app right away because it looks and feels so familiar. On the other hand, you know, one of the complaints about Lords of Waterdeep, one that I have, is that uh, because they just ported the board, it's beautiful, but it's not necessarily optimized for mobile or device gaming because there's a lot of um, lovely but empty real estate uh, that, you know, is taken up by the way that the board is laid out. So you could argue that while the gameplay is beautiful and it emulates a real game of Lords of Waterdeep very well, maybe that's not uh, the you know, maybe it's not optimal for a uh, mobile experience. So uh, a mobile experience could get away with being more minimalistic and uh, still be successful, do you feel? I, I very much think that. I think that uh, you know, some of my favorite board game apps really take into account the medium that they're operating on uh, and accommodate that. An extreme example is Agricola, where... Uh, people who are really familiar and love Agricola in the physical form actually have to adjust if they want to play it on um, iOS because the developers took a completely different artistic approach to it. And things that look and feel familiar, you know, nothing looks and feels familiar to what they were used to in the board game. However, you could argue that it has more of a video game, oh, I did air quotes, uh, it has more of a video game feel to it uh, which may be a you know the right thing to do because it is on an electronic you know device for all intents and purposes. So would it be fair to say that when it comes to a, an electronic adaptation of a board game, that really functionality is more important than design or form? Uh, design's the wrong word there. Our artistic form. Uh, you know, I'm sure you can find people that would argue in both camps. Personally. I want my cake and I want to eat it too. So I want a lot of functionality, but I want it to be a beautiful, uh, elegant experience as well. So why not have both? And the beautiful thing about you know electronic implementations is that you can update them and you can modernize them and improve them over time. Whereas once something's printed and shipped, you know you get what you get. Um, and, but absolutely, I think that really accommodating the, the, the real estate, the screen real estate that you have in a mobile device should be a number one priority for anybody uh, porting a board game to a digital sphere. 
That makes me think of another thing, in addition to the uh, apps for iOS and Android, there's also the website of Board Game Arena, which mm. um, I know we, we've actually played on recently. And uh, you're far more familiar with it, I think, than I am. I've only played on it a couple times. But do you know how many different board games are available to play through that website and how that website works? Yeah, so there's actually, Board Game Arena is one of my personal favorites. Maybe it's just the first one I tried and I'm really comfortable with it. There's also, um, it's in French, so I'm going to really mangle this. It's Boite au Jeu. Boite au Jeu. Eh, sorry. Um, and Yucada.de, which I'm also probably mangling. Uh, so those are probably the three biggest uh, board game sites on the web. And the way I understand it works is they have kind of a development kit. So really anybody can go in and, you know, volunteer to port a board game to their platform. But uh, the, the website coordinators or owners absolutely get approval from the board game publishers to to implement their games there. So when you're playing on uh, Board Game Arena, you don't need to you know worry about, you know, am I taking something away from the publisher? Does the publisher know I'm doing this? Does the designer know I'm doing this? They absolutely do. It's been approved. It's been sanctioned. And that's also why when you play on, say, Board Game Arena, as our example, uh, you're getting to play with the real art. So if you play Takenoko, you're getting the real Takenoko tile art there, which really helps... Um, it's very evocative of the real game, which really helps up the, the feeling that you're playing um, the real board game online. Um, but, you know, basically you go in and you create an account and a username. You can get friends there. So, you know, you can set up games with, with just people you know online, etc. cetera. And um, each one has a slightly different interface. But it, I think, hopefully you found as, you know, you played, it's pretty easy to play online. And the nice thing about playing online is the website takes care of like all the scoring and all the moving and placement. It it really lightens up that, which also means I think you can speed up the process. So a game that might take two hours, you can get done in an hour and a half because you don't have all that fiddly stuff. And it's really awesome if you go out and check the websites. Uh, I don't know, Board Game Arena probably has at least 25 different board games available. Yakuta has even more than that. And I haven't looked at the catalog of Boitoje recently, but um, there's a lot of options out there. Hmm. I wasn't aware that they worked in tandem with the publishers to create the, the, the games on Board Game Arena. Uh, that, however, segues almost um, into my other question, though. There's currently this game, Spyfall that has not been released in the US yet. I believe it's only, it's a Russian release, so it's only over in Russia and Europe. But um, <clears throat> a lot of you know other Americans that I play with have been playing Spyfall online and in person using this webpage, uh, spyfall.meteor.com, which emulates the Spyfall experience uh, rather well, actually. Um, you don't even have to shuffle up cards or worry about little decks or anything. Now. Do you know if, what's the story behind that? Do you know anything like if that was built in tandem or with permission with the developers of the original game? I don't know anything about it. What I can tell you is that is not the only online Spyfall client that's available. If you go to BGG and you search, you'll see actually a number of people have created their own little standalone, standalone web apps to enable people to play Spyfall online. What I can tell you is that the publisher of Spyfall has given permission in Board Game Geek forums. They, they've literally come out and said, yes, you may do print and play versions of Spyfall as long as you don't replicate our art. And since Spyfall is essentially a game of cards and words, uh, it really enables uh, people to play you know, the experience with, you know, even though it's not as pretty. It's still functional. And so I don't know if any of these online apps are getting permission. I suspect they're not. But uh, you could argue that the print and play permission from the publisher um, kind of covers it. I don't know. We'll see. Taking into account the uh, iOS and Android adaptations of physical board games mm -hmm. and the uh, accessibility of Board Game Arena mm -hmm. and then also just homegrown adaptations like the Spyfall website, do you think that all of these electronic versions of these physical board games are competing with, encroaching on, or are going to eventually cannibalize the physical board game market? Mm, that's a pretty heavy question, Chaz. I don't know if I was prepared for such deep talk. Wow. 
<laughs> well, I think that there are definitely multiple camps. I am in the camp that absolutely not. This in no way cannibalizes the physical board game realm. I think that uh, making these available only promotes the hobby, uh, makes it more accessible, exposes it to uh, players or gamers that might not otherwise have a venue or an ability to discover these kinds of games. I also think it's a phenomenal way to connect our, you know, the existing board game community. Um, I, I play on Board Game Arena with friends in Wisconsin, with friends in Arkansas, with friends in Boston. I can't believe I have a friend in Arkansas. Uh, but it's, it's an amazing experience. And does it replace the board game experience? Absolutely not. But, you know, at 10 o'clock at night the other night, I jumped online and played a game for an hour with a friend in pajamas in my game room on my computer. And we were done, and I went to bed. And I can't do that with physical board games in the same way. And, you know, quite frankly, if my collection of 450 board games and climbing says anything, it in no way cannibalizes the sales of physical board games. In closing, is there anything else that, uh, on this topic that our incredibly in-depth discussion has brought to mind that you wanted to bring up? Oh, well, you know me. I can talk about this stuff forever, so that's pretty risky that you open that door. But I think for now, I'll just say I encourage people to give it a try. I, you know, I do a segment on mobile device uh, board games. And I get a lot of comments. I, I see a lot of comments, I should say, uh, about people bemoaning the fact that they don't have a device or they don't have a device with the platform that has the game they want to play. And I think it's really great that you brought up these websites that are available to anybody that has a computer and the internet, which is pretty much, you know, everybody nowadays, uh, they have access to sites like Board Game Arena, et cetera, which are free um, to enable them to do, to, to get that experience as well. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. I don't think that that gets a lot of discussion in our community right now. And, and I really appreciate you bringing exposure to that. And I think, you know, down the line, um, the digital wave is starting to hit, you know, our hobby and board games. And so uh, beyond apps, there's going to be you know, device integration and digital integration into our physical board games. And I'm super excited about that, but I hear a lot of other opinions about it. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Indeed. And that'll be a discussion, hopefully, that we'll have another day soon. All right. <clears throat> All right. So in the meantime, where can people find you out on the interwebs? Well, if they want to get tired of me really quickly, they should follow me on Twitter. I'm at 425Suzanne on Twitter, and I tweet a lot. But we have a lot of fun, and we're playing some uh, Twitter games right now, like Mysterium and, uh, and Concept Online. So if people want to jump in on that, that's great. On Board Game Geek, my name is Gibbous. It's from, you know, 15 years ago, G-I-B-B-O-U-S. Don't ask. Um, and, of course, they can see me on Board Game Breakfast on the Dice Tower Network on YouTube talking about board game apps. That's right. Oh, I forgot all about your, your Twitter games you've been doing. Yet another way someone is cannibalizing the board game market. <laughs> I should have grilled you about that. But, uh, okay. Well, thank you for joining me, and I will hopefully talk to you again soon on another episode. Thanks for having me, Chaz. Cool. Thanks. Hello! <laughs> mean old Mr. Gravity. <laughs>